the painter Gino Perin lived in the port city of Trieste before and during the rise of Italian fascism. Born Jewish, he converted to Catholicism. When Nazi Germany occupied Trieste, Perin was arrested and deported to a concentration camp in Germany, where he died. In this series, we encounter a life full of nuance and complications during the upheavals of the early 20th century. Episode 1, Church and Cottonwood. Close your eyes and try to imagine a church in the dry high desert of Arizona. An imposing complex of white buildings imitating the architecture of Spanish mission churches, sitting on top rolling hills with parched shrubs, yucca, saltbush, and cottonwood plants. It is the last place you would expect to find a painting of Gino Perine from Trieste, Italy, a Jewish-born artist who had converted to Catholicism, but here it was, hanging in the sacristy of the Immaculate Conception Catholic Parish. Il Cristo a three-and-a-half by one-and-a-half feet painting on plywood, completely filled up with a portrait of Christ from the waist up. Cottonwood, you need to know, is a small town, population 12,000. It advertises itself as the heart of Arizona's wine country. But don't expect any romantic Italian vineyards. It is easy to miss the vineyards in this sparsely populated region. The church resides outside of town, on Route 89 that leads straight to Sedona, the much better-known tourist attraction with its magnificent red rocks. And it's here our story starts. None of us had heard of Gino Perrine before. He's largely unknown in the United States. But the more we delved into his life, the more intrigued we became. It is relatively easy to explain why Gino's Christ painting, Il Cristo, ended up in the sacristy of the Immaculate Conception Parish. It involves two families, the Perrines and the Springers. It also involves the movement of people and artworks between Italy and Arizona. This part of the story could be quickly told if it were not also a story of political turmoil, of the rise of fascism in Europe and the spreading of race laws and anti-Semitic hatreds. And in the end, Gino Perrine became a victim of Nazi Germany. Our story then starts with a painting in a cottonwood church, but it will move to a much larger canvas about a complicated life in complicated times. A Sedona resident, her name is Patricia Mongini, approached us. She had heard about the public programs of the Martin Springer Institute at Northern Arizona University, an institute founded by a Jewish Holocaust survivor from Poland. Patricia asked whether we would be interested in learning more about a Jewish painter from Trieste, a multicultural and multi-ethnic port city with ties to the Austro-Hungarian Empire and Italy. After seeing Gino's paintings of Jesus in the church in Cottonwood, we were hooked. Before we knew it, we had created a team of students and faculty to explore his life and work in the context of Europe's artistic and political culture from the turn of the 20th century until the end of World War II. Delving into Gino's background, we learned about his family. He was born Federico Guillermo Yehuda Polak in Trieste in 1876, and he died in the German concentration camp of Bergen-Belsen in 1944. His life raises so many questions. Like, maybe we should go to Cottonwood to the wineries, and after that, Trieste, Italy, field trip? <laughs> if only. <laughs> maybe one day. Luckily, there was a destination much closer, where we could get a first-hand look at the other works of Perrin. Just not in Cottonwood. But still in Arizona? Yes. Patricia Mangini was the caretaker of paintings by both Gina Perrin and Magda Springer. It is from this collection that the Cottonwood Church obtained Il Cristo. Yes, this is where things begin to get complicated. One of Patricia's aunts from her mother's side, her name was Liana Grimalda, had married Necky Springer, who had been born in Trieste and was a good friend of Gina Perrin. In the early 1950s, Necky left Trieste for Los Angeles, and then, in the late 1970s, he and his wife settled in Cottonwood, Arizona. Necky and Patricia always had a close relationship. So far, so good. Is there any other reason why Necky Springer is important to our story? Yes. Necky had a sister, Magda, who is also a painter. Both Springer siblings knew Gino Perrin, but Magda and Gino developed a special friendship. Necky was an art collector, and when he came to the United States, he not only brought many of his sister's paintings with him, but also a large quantity of drawings, 
prints and paintings and memorabilia by Gino Padin. When Necky died in 2011, Patricia and her siblings inherited his collection. Necky was a Lutheran, but later supported Catholicism. Before he died, he gifted Perrin's Il Cristo painting to the Immaculate Conception Church in Cottonwood, his new hometown. Now that we figured out how Gino's painting ended up in a Catholic church in Cottonwood, and why more of his works are in a private possession of a Sedona resident, the story could have ended there. We had established the provenance of the painting. Case closed. But wait, 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 wait. Here we have a painting of Jesus by an Italian Jewish artist who had converted to Catholicism, but died as a Jew in a German concentration camp. This is a strange and uncanny story. What have we missed? What have we not yet seen? Was he Catholic? Or Jewish? Or Italian? Did he always paint Christian religious subjects? He spoke German fluently. And was a naturalized Swiss citizen. He also had close ties with Italy's fascist elite. In 1937, Gino even won the Premio del Duce, or Mussolini Prize, at an exhibition in Trieste sponsored by the regional fascist syndicate. But the following year, in 1938, when Italy passed its anti-Semitic laws, they declared Gino to be racially Jewish. And neither his Catholicism nor his Swiss passport protected him. And he died in the concentration camp of Bergen-Belsen as a Jew. Archival documents from Bergen-Belsen sometimes classify him as Jewish and at other times as Catholic. Who then is Gino Perrine? Join us on a journey of discovery. <laughs>